In this brief tutorial, we'll show you how to implement tool keys in your Plus One applications. The tool key is one of a number of tools available to restrict access to a Plus One application. Developers may want to restrict access to applications and code for security and intellectual property reasons. Before getting into the how-tos of tool keys, let's briefly review all the security tools available so that you can choose the right one for your needs. The five main methods for limiting access to all or parts of your Plus One system are Tool Keys Tool keys are the most frequently used and easiest method to control access to the machine. They work by limiting access to an application's diagnostic data file through the service tool. We'll look more into tool keys in a moment. Access Control Levels Access control levels limit access to either individual signals or the whole system and can be modified at runtime. Application types. Application types are used to prevent inadvertent downloads to the wrong controller in cases where there are multiple valid target controllers on the same machine. Keyed software. Keyed software assures that a particular application will run only on a controller with a specific hardware part number or serial number. Page view access. Page view access prevents source code from being viewed or modified, thereby protecting intellectual property. The rest of this tutorial will focus exclusively on the tool keys. If you want more information on any of the other techniques mentioned, refer to the Plus One Guide User Manual or contact the Plus One Help Desk. As we mentioned earlier, tool keys control access to an application through the service tool. Without the correct tool key, the service tool is blocked from reading the application's diagnostic data file, which in turn means that it is unable to read signal values, such as pin inputs and outputs, and checkpoint values. It is also blocked from reading or modifying parameter values. The tool key is an all-or-nothing proposition. You either have the right tool key, which allows you to see everything in the diagnostic data file, or you don't, in which case you can see nothing. If you want to limit access on an individual signal basis, you should look at access levels, which allow that functionality. It should also be noted that tool keys do not block download of new applications. Correct tool key or not, you can still download a new application to a controller, although this can also be changed through access levels. Tool keys are easy to implement. Essentially, you enter a tool key, which is just an alphanumeric value of your own choosing, into your guide project, which is then added to the application at compile time. You will need to have the same tool key in the service tool to access the application's diagnostic data. Without it, you will not be able to interact with the application, which prevents malicious tampering. You add a tool key to the application by right-clicking on the application name in your project and selecting Add Tool Key. Then enter a case-sensitive alphanumeric value. The tool key will be added to your project. Remember that anyone with access to the source code will be able to see and change the tool key. After adding the tool key, compile and download the application. That's all there is to do on the application side. On the service tool side, there are two ways to enter the tool key, either integrated into a service tool application file or added to the service tool program environment. The preferred and most secure way to implement tool keys is to integrate the tool key into the service tool application or P1D file. In design mode, click on the design drop-down menu, select tool key and service application file and enter the tool key which will be visible neither while entering nor afterwards. You can only place one tool key at a time into a P1D file. For an additional level of security, the page can now be locked. This will prevent anyone from subsequently changing the tool key but also from changing any other aspect of the diagnostic page, such as adding new signals or parameters. 
No one, including Danfoss, can unlock a P1D page once it has been locked, so it's a good idea to keep an unlocked backup version. The P1D file can now be distributed to those who need it. The other way to implement the tool key is by entering into the Service Tool Program Environment. Do this by clicking on the Options menu, then Tool Key, and then Add. You can store multiple tool keys in the Service Tool environment, but only one is active at a time. Also, if a tool key is active in a Service Application or P1D file, it will take precedence over any added through the Service Tool environment. This method is considered less secure than embedding the tool key in the P1D as the tool key now needs to be communicated to those needing it through a means such as phone or email. Once again, without the correct tool key, you will not be able to see any diagnostic information regarding the downloaded application. Signal and parameter values and names, as well as the ECU download history, will be inaccessible through the service tool. Remember that you can still download a new application, but if the service tool doesn't contain the correct tool key, you will receive an error message just after download indicating that the service tool is unable to verify the correct file download and parameter transfer because communications with the service tool have been cut off. Trying to scan the CAN bus will result in an E242 error for incorrect tool key. We hope that you found this tutorial useful. Remember that Plus One Community Help is available on the Plus One User Forum at plusoneforum.danfoss.com or contact the Plus One Help Desk at Plus One Help Desk, P L U S plus sign, the digit one Help Desk at danfoss.com. Thank you for your attention.